Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. I'm so happy to see you here in my kitchen studio. If you've been following along, you know that last week we started looking at different kits that I was lucky enough to receive as part of the CSA program at the Color Farm. This is a local farm that I've worked with for the last few years and the community supported agriculture allows people like myself to get involved in supporting the efforts at a local farm like the Color Farm. By joining the CSA, we were given four kits that included flowers and previously dyed skeins of wool from four different artists. Last week, we looked at a box that I was the artist in and we received fresh leaf indigo dyed wool and some dried marigolds and we were able to make a second skein of beautiful yellow wool as well as work on an over dye project by taking that blue yarn and over dyeing it with marigold so we had green as well if you haven't seen that go back and check that out this week we're going to look at september's box the artist has done something amazing in the skein of wool and the flower we get to work with is none other than Cosmos. So let's sneak a peek at what's inside of that kit and get to our dye pot. So kits are incredible and there are all different places where you can buy kits that are put together with all of the materials you need to make a naturally dyed piece of fiber. I've had several videos here at Color Quest where we've looked at kits from companies like The Love of Color and it just makes it so easy, especially when you're starting out, to have everything measured and put together for you so you don't have to worry about all of the little details that we talk about here every single week on Color Quest. It is all spelled out for you and everything beautifully kitted together. So. If you ever have the opportunity to work with a natural dye kit, I can strongly recommend it. And although the CSA program is closed for the color farm, you may find local farms that are doing something just like this in your area. If not, you can look to places like Botanical Colors, who will occasionally have natural dye kits available. And I know there are a handful of other artists who are selling this kind of kit so that people like you and me at home can make some beautiful things from natural dyes. All right, let's open up this month's kit and start working on our project. So here's our kitted box again. Let's see what is in this week's box. Now we're looking this time at September. 2022. And again, the Color Farm does a beautiful job of putting together a small newsletter about what's going on and what their featured artist is working on. This month was an artist by the name of Casey Black Grove, and they did some pretty cool stuff. They actually took a skein of yarn. They then did a beautiful ombre dyed effect by using wild fennel that they collected in the Seattle area, which will bring a yellowish color. And then they over dyed it with the black hollyhock that was at the color farm. And they got this really cool two-toned design. So we'll think about how we might achieve that same sort of style in this week's video. Here is the skein of 100% merino wool that they provide in the kit. And the featured flower in this kit is going to be their Sulphur Cosmos. I absolutely love working with Sulphur Cosmos, such a vibrant dye. And again, 
we have some wonderful instructions that's going to help us with the three steps, scouring, mortising, and dyeing, specifically with Sulfur Cosmos, as well as the alum mordant provided. And then these really sweet tags. So this particular tag was already attached to the wool, and then you can see that it was fennel and hollyhock the date when it was dyed. And then we will have another tag here that we can use for the Cosmos. But I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different, and that is the Cosmos are page sensitive. So I'm going to see if I can achieve a similar two-toned skein of wool like Casey did, but doing it with Sulfur Cosmos and pH modifier. So let's start working on our wool. All right, first step is going to be scouring or washing our fiber. This wool must be pretty pure in order to not to do a full hardcore scouring with special scouring detergent, but rather just using a tiny drop of neutral detergent. So we're going to be filling a pot with hot tap water after we have dissolved the detergent in some boiling water. I'm just heating up my water in the microwave so it's hot to the touch and therefore I'm going to have this nice pot of sudsy water in order to put my yarn. We're going to put the pot then with the yarn on the stove. We want to watch our temperature, don't want to get above 160, but for me that's just low on my particular stove top. That'll just be for 30 minutes. Once it's cooled, we can then rinse it with some warm water and make sure that we are gentle with how we handle it. And then we can go straight in to mordanting. All right, time to mordant. You know how to do that. We take our alum, which is aluminum potassium sulfate, and we're going to dissolve it in some boiling water. In this instance, it's just gonna be hot water from my microwave. And then we're gonna put it right in the pot. And we're gonna fill that with water and we're gonna heat it for about an hour. Do not let it get too hot if you're using a thermometer under 160. And then we'll let that soak and present that mordant bond so that our color is going to be able to stick to the wool well. So these are the same dye instructions that we had last week and it's pretty standard. And that is we're gonna be filling a pot, we're gonna be adding the dried flowers and then heating them up. I never really take anything to a boil. I prefer to go a slow heat up and I'll keep it at a nice simmer for about an hour. Then again, we're going to have an opportunity to remove the flowers. And the reason why we're gonna remove them from the dye once it's done is because the wool would actually 
collect all those little bits of cosmos and it would be a real pain to have to pick it out of the wool. If you want to do both the prepping of the dye and dyeing of the material at the same time, you can always use just a cotton nut milk bag that you could then put the flowers into and then place it into your dye pot. I could do it both at the same time, but know that if you do leave flowers like this in, you have the chance of the bits of flowers that touch the fiber itself creating darker spots so and then finally we're going to be putting in our damp yarn straight from the mordant bath actually after we rinse it into the dye bath for about well 60 minutes is what I'm gonna do you can always pull it out earlier and then letting it cool and leaving it on much longer you might get a deeper color so while our fiber is in the mordant bath I thought it'd be interesting to look at at the weight that we're given in this kit of the cosmos flowers it's one of the beautiful things about a kit is everything measured for you you don't have to worry about it but i was just curious how much cosmos we were given and if we look at this it's about 33 grams and looking at about 33 percent of the weight of fiber with the dye material so this is not a one-to-one -one ratio and that means, as we know, these are actually quite strong, so Cosmos are pretty powerful. All right, our Cosmos dyed fiber is all rinsed and ready to go for the next step. As I mentioned, Sulfur Cosmos is a flower that is pH sensitive, which means we can alter the color by introducing it to acidic or alkaline environments. Today, I would like to deepen that orange by introducing it to alkaline. And I can do this in a number of ways. I'm going to be using washing soda, which is fairly strong in the alkaline realm. If you don't have that available to you, you can use baking soda, which is also alkaline, or something like soda ash. All of these will bring about a higher pH content and in this instance is going to deepen our orange. We looked at that when we worked with lobster mushrooms and got this beautiful vibrant palette of different shades. So let's do something similar with the sulfur cosmos dyed wool that we have and make it a two-toned or ombre style effect on the yarn itself. So here's my washing soda. I'm going to use just about a teaspoon and I am going to dissolve it in some hot water just to help that along. The dye that I'm going to put it into is no longer warm so I could heat that up but instead I'm going to just dissolve it here and then I'll be putting this slurry into the dye itself.
Wow, look at that. It looks amazing, truly amazing. I mean, from the lightest orange, beautiful color of just the straight pH neutral cosmos to the darkening using an alkaline shift of washing soda. And to be honest with you, I probably could have taken this orange and even lightened it on the acidic side using something like lemon juice or white vinegar. But look at the variation. It just looks awesome. The power of pH is really a phenomenal way, again, to increase your color palette. Let's look at it next to the ombre piece that I got in the kit itself where it was two-toned as well. That was with an over dye process in terms of getting those two colors. But if your dye material is pH sensitive, you got some shifting you can do just by playing with that as well. Very happy. Now let's take a look at all of the pieces together so far in these kits. So last week's kit came with the Fresh Leaf Indigo dyed skein. And then I used the Marigold to make this beautiful yellow, as well as taking a piece of the blue skein and over dyeing it with the Marigold. So I've got myself this incredible rainbow so far just with two kits, so exciting. Well, that result was super fun. It is just really easy when you're working with a kit. So if you know of places that are selling kits for natural dyeing, pick one up. I have a couple videos here that I looked at some kits from the Love of Color a few years ago, and those kits were fantastic as well. So go out there and see if you can't find a kit. Since the Color Farm won't have it, it doesn't mean that you won't have access to other types of kits out there. But this result was so cool. Now, next week on Color Quest, we're gonna be looking at the last kit from the 2022 season at the Color Farm. And this time, we're going to be looking at Matter Root. That is the dye plant in that kit. And the artist's surprise creation of the wool skein that was included in that kit already dyed. It's pretty spectacular. You'll have to come back next week to see it. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you next Friday. I'm going to be using washing soda or what is it called? <laughs> I always forget what is it called.